Hey there, welcome to another episode of Johanna's Art Beat. I'm your host, Johanna Grisse. Thanks for watching or listening. Um, my last episode was with was about, excuse me, Circle Jerk, the play. Um, it went really well. That was one without a guest. I hadn't done one of those in a while. So a big congratulations as it finished um, playing here in New York City. Big congratulations to Michael Breslin, Patrick Foley, Kat Rodriguez, um, Ariel, uh, everybody involved, Jeremy Harris. Congratulations to them because the play went really, really well and it was a blast to get to see it live. And I also spoke before that with Ella Smith of This Is BS, the series. Today, my episode is going to be with Michael Matteo Rossi, who um, just did a film called Shadows that's out on Amazon. He's working on a new feature. The man is busy as heck. So I'm so appreciative that he took the time to talk to me. And I think you're really gonna enjoy that interview. Thanks again for tuning in. Okay, now for the time I do my review of Michael's film Shadows. I should also note that um, when I was talking about his biography, that was all from Michael himself. Um, so I'm talking about the film Shadows, as I said, which is now available to watch online. This gritty film is set in the less Hollywood area of LA, and it centers around a young man who reconnects with his mother, sadly mainly because he decides to deal drugs and ends up pissing off the wrong people. Cody is that man, played by Rahart Adams, and his mother, Jewel, is played by Krista Allen. Allen was my favorite character and plays Jewel as full of life, even with the horrors she often faced as a prostitute. We see her fighting off a of John fairly early in the film, and it's clear she can very much handle herself. Shonda is her female pimp, and their bond isn't one we often see in films with male pimps beating their women when they don't follow orders to a T. I should just pause here a moment to note that there will be some spoilers here. Um, the film opens up with a sped up version of the city of LA with normal people going about their day. And after this view, we come to several prostitutes lined up waiting as cars drive by. This is our introduction to Cody, and Rahart is strikingly handsome. His look a clear contrast to the women he approach, approaches, excuse me. One would think he's clean cut compared to them, but we soon find he's not so different. He gets the, um, the number one of the prostitutes. He gets the phone number, excuse me, of one of the prostitutes, Michelle, who he's drawn to and they share a cigarette. We find out here that Cody is the son of Jewel and Jewel works with these girls, including Michelle. And we also find out early in the film that Cody is heavily into drugs and that there's a rift between him and his mom. As I mentioned, they reconnect. Mark and Sam, Cody's friends, all get high in Cody's car. Cody presents them with something new. This time though, it isn't just weed, which they generally do, um, it's meth. Cody doesn't seem at all hesitant to try it and it's revealed he's dealing. Now, of course, if you've watched shows like Breaking Bad, working with meth is usually a bad idea. Um, Soon the film brings us into a much larger drug dealer's world and they're missing a cut. They're dealing meth, uh, these, um, the drug dealers, and it's the same kind of the other drug dealers and it's the same kind Cody is selling. It's pretty clear that Cody has screwed things up with this kingpin, the main, main drug dealer, and it immediately puts him and his friends in danger. There's also a connection to the gang of drug dealers via his mother and Dean. Dean is part of this, this gang of kingpins of drug dealers. Jewel has a dark past that led her to her current profession, and Dean was a part of it. The question is, will he help or hurt Jewel and Cody? The film also has a colorful mix of characters, such as Axel, another one of the Kingpin's minions. He's violent, but also very emotional and more loyal to the cause than he should be, one could say. The twins, Amber and Rudy, are two women who are just as much, if not more so, violent than the men in the film. Cliff, the horrible John we all want to get his just desserts, is another character. And Nikki is the head kingpin who represents the side one could choose over family. I could also mention that based on some of the attitudes of some of the characters, um, including like um, Axel, who's very emotional, it could also be seen as a commentary on how women are seen as being the emotional ones. But when you watch this, it's often the men who are a little more prone to getting really over emotional and upset. Whereas the women are a lot more generally put together, it seems like, and that was kind of cool. Um, I also, let's see, I enjoyed the mix of languages in the film as it's set in LA. So having some of the dialogue in Spanish made it more realistic. The relationship with Cody and his mom is the backbone of the film I found, as well as the importance of family. It asks what matters more, the gang ties or actual family. And also it deals with the lasting effects of trauma. The prostitutes, including Jewel, 
are treated as full-fledged characters and not some damsels, damsels in distress or pawns as other films have done. Jewel wants to do right by her son. She's doing all she can. She's also a former addict and her dedication to improving and being there for Cody are what drew me in the most. I will note though, um, as impressive as, as the fight scenes are in this film, they're also very, very violent. So I would just let you know that. I would use caution if graphic violence and gun use in films is upsetting to you. I really enjoyed all the actors' performances, however, and the very raw feel of the film is similar to past films Michael has done. And as we'll discuss in my interview with Michael, where we discussed gun safety was very, very paramount. So that's also something you can rest easy knowing. Okay, so you know I like to talk a little bit about each guest before I do my interview with them. So let me tell you a little bit about Michael Matteo Rossi. We're mainly going to be focusing on his film Shadows, that's the main um, review here and discussion, but his other work as well. So let me tell you a little bit about him. He's extensively been involved in writing, producing, and directing, and involved in film projects for over a decade now. Like as uh, Lynn manuel would say, the man is nonstop. He attended Campbell Hive Hall, excuse me, for high school in Studio City and graduated in 05. At 19, Michael went on to make a series of short films while at San Diego State and received recognition for selections at the LA Shorts Fest. After completing San Diego State with a degree in film in 2009, he finished top of his class and now lives back in LA. In 2011, he directed, produced, and wrote The Last Wish, which screened at a lot of festivals and picked up several awards, including the Sierra Nevada, excuse me, award at the 2012 Mountain Film Awards. In 2013, Michael directed, produced, and wrote the feature Misogynist, which starred, apologies if I say any of these wrong, Jonathan Bennett, Eve Morrow, and Tracy Bregman. And he was awarded Best Narrative Feature at the LA Underground Film Festival. So cool. He has since made several other feature films, including the action thriller Chase, which came out in 2019 through Vertical Entertainment. And that also got lots of awards, including Best Action Film at um, the Hollywood Real Independent Film Fest. His most recent film, Shadows, out now, stars David LaBrava, Krista Allen, and Francis Capra. And it already won him, crazy, best director at the Universe Multicultural Film Fest. He completed an action film called The Handler, starring um, Tyrone Magnus and Chris Levine in the summer of 2020. And it was released through Uncorked Entertainment in 2021. And also completed the feature, The Sweepers, in November of 21, and currently in post. And I believe he's working on some other things as well. Wow. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Michael Matea Rossi. Hey, Michael, welcome to Johanna's Artbeat. How are you? I am doing great. Very nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you for making time. Busy out in LA. I'm over here in New York, of course. It looks yeah. like a lovely day outside today. <laughs> Very nice day. Very nice sunny day. I need a little bit of the shade, but... Uh, oh, but okay. Not... Yeah. No, it's great to be here. Yes. Um, so Michael Matteo Rossi is my guest today. And uh, we, because I like to talk about to all my guests about how we connected. I think it was just via Twitter. So there is some social media can be horrible, but it also can be great because it can connect you to some cool people. So that's always a positive. <laughs> it, it's all about perspective and how you use it. That's exactly. Amazing. And I know you're always really positive on, on, on Twitter there. So that's always good. I try to I try to be some days are a little bit more difficult with, you know, you always have some off days, but yes, I try to be. Absolutely. That's awesome. And let me see. So let, let's get to our questions. Um, so I just want to, I know it sounds like a silly, like obvious question, but uh, you grew up in LA and I've never been to LA. I just know New York. Like, is there, I've always been curious about the difference, like in the vibe. I'm assuming you've been to New York city. So uh, really I, radically different, I guess, probably. Yeah. So my mom's actually from Brooklyn. Um, oh, nice. That's where I am. Awesome. I'm from Brooklyn, from uh, Flatbush area, mm -hmm. and um, and yes, I still my my aunt and uncle on my mom's side live in Manhattan, Upper West Side, like around 93rd Street, nice area. Um, so yeah, look, it is very different. You know, obviously, one of the biggest distinctions is the weather. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> although the last time I was in New York, it was it was in June and it was actually pretty hot to be honest with yeah. you. Um, but I have been during the winter as well. And um, no, I mean, it's, it's, I think, first of all, you can make it, I think in film, 
in either city. It just really depends. But I like LA for the weather and, you know, the beaches and all of that. And, and, you know, I just have a lot of obviously like friends and family here. So it's kind of nice, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've always just been a little intimidated by LA. One of these days I'll go visit it, but I've always been a little like intimidated by it. People, people honk in New York a lot more. That that makes sense. They do here. They do. They do. One of the things that I remember about last time visiting New York, people honk all the time. Like LA, not as much, still a little, but not, you know. Yeah, I've well, literally, like, I'll be doing a self-tape and someone's honking so loud for, like, a long... And I'll literally put my head out the window and be like, shut up! Yeah. It's not, it's not yep. helping you. You're still staying in that one spot. Why are you doing that? Exactly. Exactly. Ah! It's so, really no, It is crazy. But, uh, no, both both are great places, though. You know? And Absolutely. so, uh, was, um, I'm not sure, is anybody in your family also in the industry, or you're the first one in your family? No, I'm the first one. My brother dabbled in screenwriting a little bit my younger brother but no um there's no nepotism no anything like that it's it's just me and I just always knew I wanted to tell films from a very early age and um and yeah so no nobody else in the I mean my parents and family and aunt uncle all of that they're proud of me which is nice Uh, yeah of course yeah (laughs) yeah but um but no, nobody else, nobody else in the uh, in the business. So you just said you got you interested is just pretty much you just knew you wanted to do film since you were young, you said? Well, my dad showed me a lot of classic films growing up, like some of the Hitchcock films and oh, okay, Twilight sure. Zones. Yeah, like the old school Twilight Zones and everything. Sure. And it, it definitely influenced me a bit. And even just watching movies in the theaters as a kid and growing yeah. up watching indiana jones and oh sure Terminator and all of that stuff like i was like wow i want to make films like this so um all of that kind of i just love telling stories that's where it kind of started from that's awesome you know? and yeah, uh let's good. see you um you also went to san diego state i know that's um that's always the debate because it's like as an actor at least it's like do you go to a school do you not because it's like you don't have to but it helps do you think that it was a good experience for you? What was that experience like going to San Diego State? A good question. Um, I really liked going there. I liked living in San Diego. It was really nice. It's a beautiful city. It's only it's only about two hours south of LA, so it's not okay. that far. But um, but no, I, it, it's an interesting thing. I feel it's just like learning a, a different language. I feel like you know you go to another country and then you learn the language really well, right? I learned probably more just being on set and doing my own mm-hmm. short yeah, yeah. there than anything that a class taught me. But I enjoyed the social aspect of going mm-hmm. to college, of course. And, you know, I still met some cool people there too. But I absolutely feel like you can make it without going to mm-hmm. college, as controversial as that may seem. Like, yeah, you want to get a good education, but like study films, study, study all of that, you know? So, not needed, but I liked doing it. I liked the experience. That's good. I mean, especially if you said you met some good people, I think probably the connections are probably the biggest if you get a good yeah. school. That was a good one too. Absolutely. Connections. And it looks yeah. like one of the first things you did after school was you submitted to the LA Short Fest, right? What was that like? And what's the process? Of yeah. Doing? So the, the first short film I did was just this four minute short. We shot in six hours when I was 19. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah yeah and and you know it got into it got into this festival in Burbank and um and just seeing the audience react to it everything I was hooked I which told myself with this I'm sorry which of your films it's called our lost translation it was just oh this, yeah 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 that's when I was oh, looked at. yeah right and and it was um and I just was hooked and from then I just I made a couple more films in college and then the minute that I graduated I I set my eyes on doing more features and um obviously that's a whole other animal than shorts sure. but yeah it was it was fun i i've always known that i've wanted to do it ever since that's awesome so what um because i think it said it was like uh the concept of it was an entitled white girl whose racism makes bad things happen to her i'm just curious like what like 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 uh got you to do that and why a woman is opposed to a dude i'm just curious where the plot comes oh man yeah it's- it sounds good 
thank you. I just wanted to show like, and God, this was years ago. Like this was late 06, early 07. This was, I was a baby. <laughs> uh, but, it, you know, I just wanted to tell like a kind of culturally appropriate thing about like people not judging somebody on face value and all of that and assuming certain things and and all of that so I just yeah I just wanted to to tell a story like that and it was fun to do and it's crazy to think that that was over 15 years ago wow that's that's weird um do you sorry, long time. take a sip of water um do you use a lot like do you use a lot of your own experiences to create these stories or is it usually just like totally random no, no, no. That's, a, that's again another good question. I think that I I take from experiences maybe that I've seen or people that I've met across uh you know life and everything and maybe obviously heighten it, dramatize it a little bit. Everything right. also you know I'm a product of the films that I love and the films that sure. I watch. You know the, the Scorsese, Kubrick, you know Michael, Mann, Christopher Nolan, Fincher, all Hitchcock. Uh, all of those play into to Tarantino, I guess, a little bit. Mm -hmm. All of the play into the stories that I like to tell too, because it's what influenced me. That's good. Um, yeah. yeah, and I know as an actor, um, which you've also, I think, done a little bit as well. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to get people to pay attention to you when you're starting out. So, when you yeah. did your first few films, what was the? I think you did some casting of your films too. Like, well, what was the process of getting people on board and? like getting a whole team and producing it because I think you self-produced as well like what was it like when you first started? right it's I mean you just need to surround yourself by other really hungry people that just really really want it as much as you do and um and I think that's the most important thing I think just surrounding yourself with other like-minded people that believe in your script believe in the characters that you you've written and um kind of went from there and again you know social media is that necessary evil like yeah, I, you know it can be a pain in the ass sometimes but i've met some wonderful people off of that i've met a few investors off of oh, that's cool that's yeah so you know i you you have to utilize everything that you can um and then you stick with the people that you love to work with and then the ones that you don't that's fine you know but yeah it's all about networking that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, I know you said um, short films, narrative films, or full-length films, rather, a different thing. So the first uh, yeah. full-length full movie you do is Fallen Prodigy. So how is, what was the difference going from like a short to a full-length? Like what was the... So, so Fallen Prodigy actually was a short as well. My oh, first... Oh, my apologies. That's okay. That's okay. Um, but the, the first solo directed feature film that I did, and I know it has a provocative title, was actually called... Am I there? Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, sorry. Um, was called Misogynist. Yeah, that was another one that stood out to me. Okay, yeah, yeah. That one, that one was more of a cautionary tale type film mm -hmm. that showed like this crazy messed up sociopath that takes this protege under his wing in the art of controlling women. Mm -hmm. And that was that was definitely, you know, very edgy and and what I was trying to I guess portraying that was that these type of people do unfortunately exist and just mm -hmm. a, a character study of why these people are who they are and everything. So it was, it was definitely dark. Um, and we shot that in seven days. Wow. And it's a pizza. So, but it was, Impressive. it was, it was a good experience as weird as, as dark as the content was, I got along pretty much with everybody. That's great. Um, you know, the main actor was awesome in it, kind of sickly awesome, dark and all of that. But he won Best Actor at an L.A. Underground Film Festival, which was yeah, nice. Yeah, won the Best Feature Award as well. And it won Best Feature Award too, which was nice. Um, it's just crazy to think that that was the first feature that I did, you know. Wow, that is really cool. Um, yeah, yeah. And let's see. So... I am eventually, it's probably gonna take a while, but I wanna do my own short film. What's what's the like best way for people to like get started and like the process of writing, getting a film ready? Cause I know it's a lot, even though- Yeah, it's, it, it definitely <laughs> is a lot. And look, you're ahead of the game in terms of knowing that, that you have a goal, you have an objective, you want to do it. I think that finding a story that means a lot to you and writing a story that means a lot to you, but also, cause again, 
most of us in the indie film world, you know, we have to think about budget. Exactly, so no, yeah, big thing. <laughs> I, no people jumping out of helicopters just yet. And, and no, 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 I can't afford it. <laughs> um, but yeah, and just, I mean, reaching out if if you need a cinematographer or actors or there's a bunch of breakdowns and just having a really good assistant director or maybe a co-producer that that help build it up for you um keeping organized it's it's just it's bringing those people all together so that's the thing um but it starts with the script right write a script really even that's good. Um, thank you. So another one of your films, before we get to the main one we're focusing on, I'm talk about quickly Chase. Um, it was also another one you directed, you wrote, and I think cast as well. Pretty, pretty, yep. Yeah. And your lead Chase is Damien Puckler. I'm not sure if I'm saying yep. that right. Yep. Um, yeah, good. Okay. He had to choose between being, you know, this hitman and a partner and a father, his partner being right. Jessica Morris. Um, and I yep. found that in the films that I've watched of yours, women and family seem to be a big catalyst for positive change. So if you want to tell me a, a little bit more about that film, um, and also the fact that you had Aries Spears in it, which is very impressive as well. Yeah. So you're still fairly new-ish. I don't know. Right. Yeah, no, <laughs> he took a good chance on me. I think that he really liked the script. And he's actually, he's a very talented guy. I think that a lot of these stand-up comedians, they can do amazing in dramas. I oh, yeah, mean, yeah. I don't they take from dark places in their own life and they put it in there. But he's, he's a cool guy. He's a soft-spoken guy, like on set, like just kind of kept to himself. But he was, I never really had any uh, problems at all. Like he was, he was a good guy and he always treated me re with respect, um, you know, which was great. And yeah, in terms of like, you know, this pattern of like family and like the motherly influence and all of that, I think that, that stems from personal stuff that also stems from just you know no family is perfect that's true and, yeah. you know at all and you know sometimes we see every holiday and christmas season you see the perfect family portrait and all of that and everybody's happy but at the end of the day we all know that no fa no family is perfect that's there's true. a lot of dysfunctional sure. families there's a lot of people who don't speak to their mom dad and all of that so I want to show that, you know, there's those situations where these characters have a lot of, um, they, they, yeah, I mean, they need to make these tough choices. No, it works, though. Um, yeah. And the film also has a younger actor, um, Mika or Micah, I forget how it was pronounced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, played by Eli Michael Kaplan. He's the son in the film. How is it? Yeah. I've always been curious with, like, the younger actors when there's an intense scene. How do you, like, work with them to make sure they're comfortable. And I assume their parent is comfortable with whatever's yeah, happening. Yeah. How does that work? The mom, there, the mom was there every day and we had to actually get a studio teacher as well. Oh, oh um, yeah, yeah, because they're supposed to be in school. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, um, no, so he, he was supposed to play five, but I believe he was about nine mm -hmm. in real. Oh. So he got a little bit more mature. He was able to kind of be more receptive to, he, he understood kind of what was going on, but I tried to explain it, you know, in a very like easy bare bone way. But um, yeah, I mean, kids and animals, right? They say avoid those. With yeah, right. And all that. Is it more difficult working with child actors? Yeah, it is. I'm not even going to lie about that. Um, but it was, he, he was a sweet kid. You know, he's very like energetic. He's very curious about everything okay. going on. And the mom was very nice um, and everything. But yeah, I don't, I don't work with too many kids in film though. It's interesting, but that's okay. It was, it was, it wasn't a bad experience. No, and he's not in it a ton. So he wouldn't have to deal with a lot of the scarier elements. Correct. Way, Correct. Which is good. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah. And so now let's discuss the latest film you have out now, uh, Shadows. Yeah. Um, it stars uh, Krista Allen as Jewel. And maybe I'm going to butcher this name, but Rahart Adams? Rahart, correct. Rahart Adams is Cody, Eric uh, Atar Atarby. Atabari. Atabari, Atabari I'm sorry, yeah. Dean. Rachel uh -huh. Alec is Michelle, and yeah. David Labrava is Nikki. So this is another one that you wrote, directed, and cast it, because you do everything. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, do you find it easier, I'm just curious, not working with the casting director? Because I know directors have the final say anyway, but do you like better doing it yourself? Or is it... Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I've... I, I, 
I care so much about my characters and I just, I'm very hands-on and type A personality when it comes to this. So I've just, I've been my own kind of casting director for a while. And I like, and like obviously I'll get certain other people's opinions from self tapes and stuff like that. But um, I like how I operate this way. And I will say, and I've said this before, I think, um, I think Shadows is the best film that I've done so far. I think it's my best active film. Uh, I think it's the best cast. Like that's the one I'm probably the proudest of followed by Chase as number two. Awesome. Um, and I also really like that you had, Krista was just like, she's the kick-ass female lead. Um, right. I'm just curious about the process of choosing her because I felt like she was really like pulled the film together. Like, I don't think it would have been as good if it was someone else, to be honest. Um, be, yeah. Great. So what was the process? Cause it looks like she did a lot of soap opera work. Was it like her audition or certain other works that made you choose her? We, I'm just curious how that went. We, I think I reached out to Krista directly. We were like randomly nice. like Facebook friends or something like that. And, um, and yeah, I mean, she loved the script. We talked about it, everything, but I get a lot of good feedback from, um, from people on her and also Dean, the Dean actor as well. Yeah, too, um, yeah. You know, though, but those two and um, no, I mean, Chris was just very like passionate about the role and everything. And it was, it was a 25 day shoot in total. Um, so that was technically my longest film shoot to date. Um, but no, it was a great process. And it was actually a couple months before COVID happened. So, oh, wow. Uh, yep. It was like, Time, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was super late. 2019 oh wow yeah so that was you've also got like i mean like you said the actor playing dean uh and also the actor who plays the son who's an australian actor of all things yep. you really like did you kind of like want to make sure they all fit in together because even though their their relationships are like strained you could still see them as a family unit so did you think about absolutely as well yeah i mean rahar was awesome like he's such a nice dude and like we just really got along and he killed the role too. Yeah, Such a nice all great. And right. And no, I mean, the dynamic worked like, you know, just like with any film, there's stressful times, but it was, it was a great experience and I'm just very happy with how it turned out. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so your films, I have to ask your films have a lot of, you know, gunfighting and I'm just yeah. curious- what it's okay i mean it's movies so of but um, what is like the procedure for like, i've been near like a fake gun but that's about it and i'm always kind of curious what the procedure is if there's training or like what's the safety measures i guess taking place absolutely well i'll tell you something kind of interesting um with my last feature film sweepers that's getting all cut together and everything the week that we had one of our biggest action scenes was actually the week that that Alec Baldwin thing happened. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, yeah. So people were even a lot more on edge and, and everything. Sure. But first of all, I never use real weapons at all. That's I think good. that's silly to use real weapons. Great, yeah. I use blanks. I don't use projectiles. I don't use anything like that. They're all air soft guns or air guns. They, at most, would shoot compressed air. That's okay. it. So it has the blowback. But we make sure I get an armor and we make sure everything is safe. The gun only goes to the person it's designated to. Right. When they're done with it, it gets put aside and every gun is cleared, even before given to the actor, down to the ground, click, 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 see nothing's coming out, click, 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 there you go. And you know, an opportunity for them to check it themselves. So, you know, I've, I've worked with many guns, fake guns, but, handguns machine guns you name it and no problems because we do it right exactly that's good you know? yeah, yeah. um no and problem. i think it makes sense doing the air thing like they should all do that i think then they should all do that and then you put in vfx at the end or yeah. in post yeah definitely um so tell me also about the choice to make um, a sex worker the lead you know jules a sex worker i thought you know, even that was her profession, it really was just her job. It didn't define her. She was very fleshed out. Did you speak with anybody in the industry or like, is there a certain reason you decided to pick someone in that profession to be the lead? Because I feel like people who have some of these taboo professions Mm -hmm. sometimes get a bad rap and are judged on face value just by their profession and not who Mm -hmm. they are as a person. Mm -hmm. So 
I like exploring the underworld and different people and, you know, different roles. So um, I don't know. It just, it kind of fascinated me. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're all human beings. Oh, yeah. You know? But I think it and really- I even put it like, as it's, it's a means. It's a means. It's not what defines them. They do it right. for- the money they do it to support themselves who they care about everything right. but um but yeah it's it's i mean it worked out well you know and 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 then you have the michelle character who as well right. you know but yeah i just i don't know i found it interesting to make those characters that uh, no I, I liked it um and so just in general with your with your uh, your scripts, do you pretty much does everybody just stick to the script or do you like how let people improv? Like how does that work? Is it always just I'm, like, you know what I mean? I'm a big I'm a big fan of improv as well, to be honest with you, and like ad libbing and doing stuff like that. Cool. So um if it's within the realm of the the kind of message and what I'm going what? for, yeah, yeah. I'm cool with it. But I'm I'm an actor's director, so I'm all about just talking with the actors and just making sure hey like i'm cool with you ad-libbing but let's talk about it first yeah what absolutely that's think? fair yeah yeah you know so i'm I'm pretty flexible actually yeah that's cool. yeah um and one thing i'm also curious about i'm not spoiling anything but people yeah. do generally die in your film sometimes some people do i won't say who dies a lot but do sometimes a lot yes. do, yeah but i did once i did a death scene in an independent film and it's just it's not as easy as you think like so yeah, how no, do you get actors all. to do it right and like to make it look really authentic like what's the process like it's tough i mean it's tough so thankfully the ones have had experience with also getting killed in, in certain films and stuff like that but you know depending if they're falling or, or anything like right. that we usually have a crash pad there you know okay. so they're they're falling on something soft and, and and just if it looks fake or if it looks like that it's funny I, i'll say one thing i cameoed as a person that just got killed and um and I basically the DP had to stop it because he was like, Mike, you're smiling while you're <laughs> like, okay, like, there you go. like a little, uh, but you're dying, you're hand. smiling. Don't do that. Yeah. Like I <laughs> ran on my face. Right. And, and even <laughs> something like that. I'm like, wait, I wasn't even like, I didn't even realize that I yeah, was. Yeah. Some of that happens. Yeah. Some of I've had that. Yeah. So credit to those who make it as naturalistic as possible yeah, because it's not cool. as easy as people may think yeah it's like yeah definitely yeah. um so when this film was done or or in the process too now of, of distributing it what's the, what was the next step to get it distributed like how did you get it out to like amazon or wherever it was going like what's that process like so you usually shop it around to sales agents or distributors okay. and you know, I found a good deal with, with one and I had worked with them before and kind of the rest was history. And, and, you know, we kind of went from there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's finding the one that's the right fit that you feel is going to get the film out there. Um, the best, Absolutely. You know? cool. that's at least what I think. Yeah. So it's yeah. good. So you've done, I mean, I was looking at your IMDb, the amount of films you've done, it's, it's crazy. It's like, it's a Thank lot. Um, so Thank it looks you. like you just completed Love and Love Not as associate producer. I don't know if you can share with us anything about these films, like when it'll be- so That, that yeah. actually is premiering on Saturday. Oh, um, nice. I helped okay. my friend Anthony on. It's a great film. And um, and yeah, I mean, so that, I, I try to help as well with, with awesome. certain things. And um yeah, no, so that that was good. So I I dabble like I like directing the most though. That's what I like to do the most. Well, what is that film about? Can you say or if you're not you can't. Um it's kind of like a it, it's, it feels a little bit like a kind of coming of age type film okay. a little bit where a guy kind of goes back for a reunion to New York. A lot of it was shot in New York by oh, the nice. way. Um yeah, and and just kind of like it's a mix of some of those older like Woody Allen films slash the big chill and all that. It's a little bit of like Annie Hall, Manhattan, and then like, yeah, the big chill, but it's, it's, it's good. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and where, do you know where people will be able to view that? If, is this, is this oh, it'll probably get released later in the year. Oh, gotcha. 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 Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned earlier the sweepers, uh, which is in post-production Yes. Uh, can you tell us a little about a little more about that one because you kind of mentioned it a little and um 
what, what entails post-production for people who are not in the industry? So post-production is basically the editing it, literally piecing it together, then adding the music, color design, sound design, um, all of that type of stuff. It's basically splicing everything together, um, you know, and yeah, it's, it's going really well. We're almost picture locked, which wow. means that, that we have like everything pieced together, but now we go into music, we go into everything like that. So it's going well. Um, it's a slow and steady process sometimes, but I'm happy with how it's going. Awesome. What is that one about? Can you say? That is about a family of assassins. Oh, okay. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. That, it's a little, but also taken from some Shakespearean elements, oh, a little cool. bit of Macbeth and Hamlet merged together in a more contemporary action setting. Um, but no, that was a fun one too. And we shot that in October and November of last year. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. So that was, that was good. And uh, you're also, because you're doing a million things, as I said, you're currently filming Vengeance. Um, can you tell us a little about that? And I know you kind of told me about how long shoots go. This one is also yeah. a TV series. Though. Like, is what's different about filming a TV series? And is it going to be on a certain network? Or you don't know yet, probably. So Vengeance, Vengeance is that one that's like, it. we did a pilot of it. And it's a whole other animal, to be honest with you. It really is. And, you know... I guess we're still like, I'm open to it, but it's not, it's actively kind of, it's like in limbo a little bit, to be honest with yeah, you. That's fair. So, um, I'm not, yeah, like, we'll see what happens with that. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. What's that one about so far anyway? It's about, it's about like this kind of, it's like a superhero film a little oh, bit, a little okay. bit like The Punisher. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty cool though. Mm -hmm. No, awesome. definitely. Um, and then you also have the Charisma Killers, which is in pre-production. If you want to tell us a little bit about what pre-production is. Yeah, so pre-production is basically getting getting everything sorted out. It's casting, it's crewing up, it's finding locations, it's getting all the props and production design stuff taken care of. So that's going to be my next feature, and that's in October. And we're almost cast up. I feel really good about everything. Awesome um and that could be my best film well you're gonna keep getting better what's um could be. Could what's be. this one we'll see what's this one about oh man it's uh it's basically about a, a group of seven basically killers oh, wow. and this old man who keeps them protected finds out he has cancer mm -hmm. and then he mm -hmm. tells all the seven to go out for one night of just this epic mayhem to okay. exact revenge on somebody and then they could have his fortune. Wow, okay. That sounds like it's going to be very interesting. A mix of like some Guy Ritchie films from the 90s to Suicide Squad to Magnificent sure. Seven to yeah. all of this type of stuff. But it's it's going to be good. Yeah. Do you, think, do you think that does sound really great? Do you think that um, you. you'll ever, ever do another kind of genre film? Or you always just like to, like, do you think you'll ever do like romance or more straight drama? Nah. Like just um, action. That's fine. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm open to it. Hmm. It just has to be the right story. Right. It has to be the right characters, um, all of that. So I am open to it. It just depends. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so I ask all of my guests this because I think it's really yeah. important for when people are struggling, like people like me who like haven't made it yet. Um, is there a point where you thought you were just going to quit, and like what kept you going? Absolutely. Um, I I don't want to name this film, but there was a film that I did about six, seven years ago that was the worst filming experience of my life. Sorry. It was toxic. It was horrible. It was just awful, awful, awful. And I remember taking about a one month sabbatical just to mentally detox. Right. And then I went kind of back to the drawing board and, and you know, cultivated a new team and everything. But yeah and there there's times where this business is slow yeah or when you have really close calls and it doesn't go your way mm -hmm. so it it really depends but just if you love it stick with it mm -hmm. it i know it can be tough but stick with it awesome. that's what i would say awesome that's good advice um uh, well this has been an awesome conversation so before i let you go 
Thank you so much for your time. Oh, um, tell me, tell our listeners and our viewers uh, where they can, you know, follow what's next for, for Michael. Sure. Yeah. Again, I'm, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It's just Michael Mateo Rossi. Um, you know, I'm try to be pretty friendly and easily reachable <laughs> those ways. He's very, very um, nice to talk to you. Yeah, you're good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, and, and most of my films uh, that are released are on like Amazon, iTunes, some are on Tubi, uh, Google Play, you know, the, these type of things. So, you know, just search them. Um, Shadows is my best. And then Chase, if you want to see Shadows or Chase, those I think are the ones I'm the most proud of. Um, but yeah, I mean, just reach out, say hello. You know, I'm, I'm I, like I said, I try to be pretty friendly. <laughs> you do good. Uh, well, thanks. Michael Mateo Rossi, thank you so much for being on the show. Have a Absolutely. great rest of your sunny day. <laughs> thank you. Likewise. See ya. Bye. Well, that's it for another episode of Johanna's Art Beat. I'm Johanna, your host of the show. Thank you so much to Michael Mateo Rossi for being on the show. Make sure to check out his film Shadows. If you just go online and search his name, you can also find um, access to his past films as well. It's quite a lot. Um, coming up, I've got some really exciting guests that uh, will reveal themselves soon enough. Um, and I wanted to uh, dedicate this episode to Aaron Cronikin, um, who unfortunately passed away fairly recently and was a member of the theater community here in New York City. Um, she was quite a wonderful person. I got to meet her a few times, auditioned for her, and although she had terminal cancer, I um, I was still pretty shocked to hear of her passing, and she was quite a bright light, so I just wanted to send love and light to her family, um, and she worked for the Seaton Place, so I guess if you wanted to see more of her work, you could check them out. I'm not sure what's happening with them, but I did want to just dedicate this episode to her. Um, if you'd like more information on me, check out my website, johannagrisset.com. I'm on Instagram, Johanna R. Grisset. On Twitter is Johanna Grisset as well. And I'm also on TikTok now at official Johanna Grisset. Remember to keep masking, get a booster, a second one even if you can, and stay safe out there. Thank you so much for your time and for listening. Make sure if you're listening to the video or watching, excuse me, the video that you comment if you can, just to let me know if you're enjoying the video component or not. Um, and be sure to follow the, the audio version as well, wherever you get podcast, podcasts. Podcasts. <laughs> Until next time.